Today's video is sponsored by Audible. Spoilers? I wasn't lying. Curious if this is vague enough for anyone who maybe doesn't know what... There's no way to actually ask without... Oh, whatever, you know why this is a win. <laughs> Organizational skills. Wolverine. I, I love Wolverine. You know I love Wolverine. But I basically owe my career to Deadpool. You can expect a little bias in this one. So, yeah. Wolverine. Love the shiny suit. Really brings out the sex trafficker in your eyes. Compliments. Sign translates to Deadpool. I'll take a cranberry grapefruit and vodka. I know it's called a sea breeze. Don't make me say it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the bartender got shot, but then they decided the sea breeze joke was worth breaking continuity. Agreed. Also, after being a bad influence and in smoking in the opening, Mr. Poole rectifies that by putting the bartender's cigarette out for her. I'm sure this is just one of those pick your Enya moments, but the fact that a bloody bathhouse sword slaughter was shot with this undoubtedly running through Wade's head while executing some amazing sword fight choreography makes it all the better. And just in case it wasn't clear if Deadpool had any rules, bathhouses, funerals, coke factories, uh, okay, the last one's probably fine. But how about this long take slightly sped up in the background with the main goon running away in slow-mo in the front? That's some editing coordination for you. Of all the people I'm thankful they brought back for the sequel, Dopender is top of the list. <laughs> Appropriate reaction. Oh, I hit my pants. Actually, that may, that may have been me. Double honesty. When Tom Cruise for 10 year old Kirsten Dunn's blood for the first time and said, I want some more. When Deadpool makes you question the defensibility of a 90s movie about vampire socialites, one of whom stars in this film. I was fighting a caped badass. Then we discovered his mom is named Martha too. I'll take that one on the chin. We earned it. <laughs> Kiss me like you miss me, Red. Well, come here. Love. <sighs> also a little aha shadowing in the background. That's genuine, high-grade lead. And bullet stop shadowing. They always seem to come in twos. Anyone else notice that? Get down. Pooley? Sense? Deadie? Sense? I like to think it's actually just Deadpool seeing the next page of the script. Okay, that's pretty brutal when you consider what it would do to Wade's bones to hit the car with that much force. Ingenuity? Don't recommend it. But it's an out of the box murder for sure. Out of oh man. Not only did you get Canadian superstar Celine Dion to sing her freaking heart out, but you managed to one up the opening credits from the first film. Not even bothering with vague references to anything, just pure disbelief that his movie is starting this way. This song is also the first, but not close to the last time, that this movie balances the line between hilarious and emotionally impactful somehow while embracing both. I mean, I genuinely laugh at a brass and shower, and I genuinely get chills from the chorus of this song, and what it means to each of the important characters. Can beauty come out of ashes? What is this movie? Also, Deadpool ballet dances in the music video. We've reached a new level of meta. It's like a meta Ouroboros. Also, take note that most everything shown is related to her death. Cream cheese spreader, shell casings, tokens, but also gives away the entire ending with the bullet wound that kills him, Cable's daughter's bear unscorched, and the bullet hitting the token saving him. More importantly, I liked her. Brushed off, but yeah, take that one to heart, kids. Love is necessary, but liking your partner goes a long way. George Michael's right, I'm never gonna dance again. Careless Whisper is always a win. <laughs> he wasn't lying in the first movie. The gear for blindness really was in there. It's a little hard to hear you with that pity dick in your mouth. Sensitivity. Man, just the visualization of a guy stuck trying to enter the afterlife who can't die. Ha! <laughs> Light refracting off of Colossus's back on the wall behind him. <laughs> okay. So not only is this the best collection of cameos in one room ever, Quicksilver is also wearing a Nirvana shirt, meaning they're probably in the 90s, which plays right into the whole timeline insanity issues. The fact that they were just filming Dark Phoenix aside. Vanessa is gone. She's not coming back. Well, depends if you're patient through the credits. Did someone decide that Josh Brolin just looked really good in purple, or...? He does, I mean, it's a pretty badass bad guy moment just by coming on screen. Have I also mentioned that I love the way Tyler Bates leaned into the 80s Terminator vibe for Cable's theme? <laughs> That's a good way to get on the Deadpool board, Christopher. It's interesting, while the backstory of Russell's plight in the extended makes him more likable rather than this being his intro, Open fires. not learning anything about him before Wade does makes the story flow better going forward and leaves you uneasy about Firefist. Come quietly, or there will be trouble. You stole that from Robocop. Robocop. Appropriate plagiarism. He's more metal than Peter Weller anyway. 
superhero landing to make Deadpool proud. Hang on. Non lethal incapacitation, that's such a Deadpool way to do things. I mean, it's actually ridiculously dangerous, and with one slip could have been totally movie ending. Slow clapping Leto Ledger Joker. Huggies natural care wet wipes. Sponsored content with none other than Loki himself. Also, Damon is credited as Dickie Greenleaf, which was a character that he, as Tom Ripley, was trying to become. Ah, good stuff. Also, Alan Tudyk is always a win. The industry discriminates. You're forgetting about the blob. I've been waiting for someone to come and save me. Poor Ricky Baker. Where's Sam Neill when you need him? They keep a monster in the basement. Right next to a huge steaming ball of foreshadowing. I would have called it bisection shadowing, but whatever. Wade Wilson would still be good at cinema wins. Oh man, his daughter's bear is set up the same way as him with the eye and everything. Also, Josh Brolin's workout routine. Find the biggest guy and make him your- <laughs> Oh man, that's brutal. There's something so above it all and apathetic about the way Cable throws that grenade as if he just can't be bothered. Yep. Saving that kid you just said you wouldn't save. And then saving that guy who said he'd never save you. Brutal. Hello, superpowers. I don't know. Extended edition may take it this time. Donde esta la biblioteca? Who are you? I'm Batman. My name's Cable. I'm from the future. Candor. Look, it's different than honesty. Look it up. No, wait, no, wait. It's been so long. That's your Cinema Wins Word of the Week. It's not just honesty. It's usually surprising honesty. <laughs> Resourcefulness. Also, I'm not sure who it's more brutal for. I love dumpsters! Ah! Deadpool further proving his control over this universe. What's this one do? Helpfulness. What's your superpower? Cut it. That's adorable. My favorite thing about Cable is that his origin as a physical character isn't even close to explored in this film. Because it just doesn't matter and it's so insanely detailed it's like there's this other movie where he stars and it's all about him. Oof, generosity with a snack pack nonetheless. Superpowers? I can distort electrical fields. Yeah, Baraka Pool killed the last guy who... Wait, no, that was Sabretooth. Still, no amount of light bulb brightening or Terry Jeffords' healthy lifestyle can save you now. No. No, I spit acidic vomit. And here I thought your specialty was eating children. Everything usually just kind of works out for me. Like 2008 Ryan Reynolds. Hey man, like, the proposal is like, it's just not the worst movie, alright? 2009 Ryan was doing just fine. You should be so lucky to share the screen with Sandy B and Mrs. White. <laughs> but it is. Okay. <laughs> you're higher. You're higher. All it takes is to keep up verbally with Deadpool and you're in. Also, she's the only one that doesn't get the death knife, just gently tacked. Ha! <laughs> Jean Valjean's prisoner number. It's almost as if he wants us to know the plan will fail. I guarantee he hasn't killed as many people as melanoma has. Skin cancer lessons and sun safety lessons. Both good. I just want to say how proud I am of this team. You know, you guys look amazing. This is a family that I've always dreamed of having. Sincere compliments and genuine excitement from the most depressed man on the planet. Everyone gets an A plus for style. Peter's runner up, but I've got to give the gold to Shatterstar's perfect superhero form. No, tripping mother Billy! Because <laughs> he's like Dave Matthews, causing anxiety, pain. So basically, you're Dave Matthews. Oh, these movies work great on multiple viewings. Left, the stage left, you idiot! Alright, so obviously Thunderstruck is amazing, but the fact that it cuts out for every death is just so perfect. Because their song is over. All right, that's runner-up for most shocking cameo. I apologize. The whole team is dead. Well, that's what you get for not thanking the bus driver. But there is a slight chance Vanisher could make it. Okay, so as brutal and sad as this whole set piece is, let's say expectation subversion at the very least, and another long take all done in camera. Things that just don't need to be as good as they are. Who knew these winds would be so strong? Everyone, everyone on the helicopter, and everyone not on the helicopter. She's not wrong. There's a wind advisory in effect. A little turbulent up here. Is anybody nervous about the high wind? Hey, watch your informant graffiti. Wait, does this count as one of Tesla's self-driving errors? Pretty unlucky. Oh, man. It's certainly not very cinematic. Yeah, not cinematic at all. That's just another way of saying yep. Hmm. I guess Cable doesn't need to use a cable. <laughs> I feel, I feel like, are there a lot of puns in this video? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Brutal. And another Model 3. Elon, I thought you didn't believe in advertising unless it was in space. <laughs> yup, is that Cable's third yup? Why does he get all the coolest moments? Got it! No, I don't. See what I mean? 
Saving the last remaining member of X-Force. <laughs> Apparently Black Tom Cassidy's only powers in this movie are laughing in time with dubstep. Again, referencing Origins Wolverine in an awesome way and then mocking it in the same breath. He really is a gift. Ow. Another stolen move from Logan. Also actually from Benicio Del Toro and The Hunted. You should watch that. <laughs> Holy crap, yup. That ass bad guy. I mean, Enya's only time has gotta be always a win, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Turns out Domino's a bit of a badass. Again, Deadpool, you've got the job. Just let me know when you want to start. People have been requesting some kind of limeish light source. It's been a dream of mine to see my face reflected in your helmet as you charge at me with murderous intent. Kind of like this? I'm going to rip you in half now. <laughs> Brutal. I think I don't. It, it's also like sincerity. <laughs> so wrong and so fun. No, it's just so wrong. So many levels. It's what we all wanted, but we now we wish you could send it back. Your boy. Is that really necessary? Basic instincting is always necessary, and even with the same musical cue. That's still just so wrong. Do Only do over, over the, the pants, pants mouth stuff. stuff. <laughs> I may dislike TJ Miller as a person, but his comedic timing won't be denied. You remind me of my wife. I'm sorry? I said you remind no, me No, I'm sorry of my that wife. you said that while making heavy eye contact and applying lip balm. Another instance of switching back and forth between comedy and real stuff. And I really have to give Josh Brolin the credit because he just doesn't care and is definitely in his own much more serious movie. It was my fault she died. Something Wade can absolutely relate to in case you were wondering why he immediately was willing to work with Cable besides the plot demanded it. Beautiful, hairless, twister-legged baby boy. Mm. <laughs> Cable's finally the right height. Boom! <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Planets. Oh, that's so Deadpool. Nothing bothers a nihilist. And just FYI, confirmed in the commentary. Ryan agrees. Deadpool's suit is duct taped back together after the last few incidents. You're doing great. Encouragement. I have a gluten sensitivity. So one glass of wine, I just... <laughs> Honesty. Yeah. And oh man, Wade's nothing if not candid with perpetuating misinformation about gluten. You're drinking the wrong wine if it has wheat in it. Wish we could head back in time and I could uh, take all that back. Also, he does actually get to redo this and does it right the next time, so... We on fire. Step up in the park. You don't realize how perfect this Diplo song is until you hear them try to make this finale work with the Steve Miller band and other various artists. This was the right choice. No room for a played straight slow-mo hero shot. Gotta get Deadpool's concern over Dopinder's intensity. So too far gone. Zip it, Thanos. So obviously he's all about the references, but not without cause. Trying to save the future by destroying an innocent now. Mm -hmm. Every man for themselves! Teamwork. Yeah, I was being sarcastic, but it does actually turn into teamwork. Making Spinal Tap proud. Hey, big guy! The sun's getting real low! And now I can't stop wishing Deadpool had been in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Dead Helm. Ha! Huh, little light refraction to let you know who's coming. <laughs> so you have your choice of watching the love affair between these two, or poor Cable getting tossed around in the background. Also continuity from when he got shot through the hand earlier. Big CGI fight coming up! Yet somehow it takes nothing away from its awesomeness. In fact, to even compare an eye-stabbing, groin-punching, finger-breaking, tooth-losing, jewelry-threatening fight to the normal generic CGI fight is unfair. Everything in movies is technically fake, you know? Even Jackie Chan only gets kicked in the face accidentally. Ooh, that little sand kick to the eyes. I guess we're all fighting dirty now. Oh, it's a good thing Domino is so pretty and somehow gentle because otherwise she's coming off as the brutalist bad guy in this fight. Also, it's not really her fault, right? Just bad luck. Also, I'm totally joking. The assumption is that these guys all tortured kids. I just wanted an excuse to compliment Domino's appearance. Even if she'd probably admit she's no Josh Brolin, but still. Ha! <laughs> it's almost like he noticed where the shot came from by the blood on the camera. Fourth wall directional break. Oh my god, did you feel that too? <laughs> Only best buddies execute pedophiles together. All right, now it's teamwork and friendship. I'd say you had that cable coming. I'm gonna shove that cab driver right up your ass. Now I'm gonna shove the red guy up the old guy. Glad to see Yukio found work again after Logan died. And also new powers. Probably could have saved Deadpool and Cable some trouble if you just made one of your heart and death predictions. <laughs> That's the most brutal teamwork we've seen. Man, there are more awesome practical looking explosions in this film than there are in all the X-Men films that came before. I didn't even come close to confirming that, but I'm sticking to it. If you kill him, he wins. You become everything he says you are. How about that character growth from the end of Deadpool 1 till now? Probably about as close to an X-Force suit as we'll get. I'm good with it. Self-sacrifice. Also a chance for Wade to make up for missing the first time. Tell me they got that in slow motion. Even in death, Deadpool only cares how it looks to his audience. 
Ooh, and a Dutch tilt because that's not generally Deadpool's go-to move. I guess, I guess my heart was finally in the right place. Just in case you missed that, he means literally in the place the bullet was traveling. Right from the beginning, Vanessa told him so. And when it turns out that this is actually Mistress Death rather than Copycat in Deadpool 3, I won't be surprised or disappointed. Guys, for a second there, we made a pretty good team. And jokes not aside, because you can have jokes as well as emotion in this one, but how about the fact that they slipped a real X-Force in for you after the fake out one earlier? Papa, can you hear me? Clearly hits Josh pretty hard to hear a stepmom song from his new bestie. Say f for me, f Wow. Friendship? Okay, so if you saw my 60 second review, I mentioned a joke or two going a little long, and this is the main one. But now I'm realizing that this is just Deadpool literally milking the length of his own death because he has that much control over what he appears in, and now I decided I love it. Talking away, take I really have no explanation on how this gets me so bad. It's just a dumb, potty mouth comic book movie that constantly acknowledges how fake everything is. But man, oh man, one of the best unplugged versions of a song ever and a genuinely emotional climax that isn't undone by anything that comes after because the now is what matters. Their love is real and she lets him go to be with his family. They need you. Who? Your F word. Well, come here. A little more love. Don't f help us. Colossus. What? <laughs> Finally, is that just the tiniest acknowledgement of his pan nature? Well, what are you doing? Somebody swiped right. Saving your new bestie. Is there a knife in my There's a knife in your Friendship? Here I the am. day of reckoning is here! Facts. Of course the love of his life, Marina Baccarin, is the only one to be objectified. This has been pretty scary. Go home, Sugar Bear. Go home. Saving Sugar Bear. Really avoided a catastrophe there, huh? Hey, it's me! Don't scratch! Finally, the real Wade and Logan on screen together. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Just saying, we could have fun. It wasn't all green CGI suits. Plus, your real wife is in it. We could just say nice things about her. I love Gossip Girl. I'm sure you have opinions. Eh? Oh? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Well, whatever, they're happy with kids now. Ryan, let's talk. I didn't give Team Headkick a win last time, and that was an oversight. So here's 10. So this track title makes me think it should play during the scene between Al and Wade before he blows himself up, but I don't think it does. It doesn't really fit there at all. It does sound similar to the piece during his ripoff of Colossus's three or five moment speech, but it's a different key. But ooh, it's an amazing track that I'm fine with it just being here. Okay, now that I've edited the entire video, it's during this scene, which... Ah, Tyler Bates' most moving piece of music was placed here. Hi, this is a toughie. This is so much harder than I thought. Uh oh Oh, I'm going to hell. Yeah, good thing even Deadpool had a line in the sand for theaters. Kind of would have undone the whole importance of the third act of the movie. I think we both know I don't have what it takes to do this, so I'm gonna come back with my friend Cable. He loves killing kids. Good call, guys. It would be fair to say that 84 is not a true representation of how good the first Deadpool is, so maybe I went a tad overboard with this one, but it was a different time. I had a different, well, a very small audience until after that video. So I think we're finally making up for that. Maybe a redux someday. Honestly, the toughest part about winning a movie like Deadpool 2 is that it's so filled with great writing and performances that super talented people who would otherwise stand out, like Julian Dennison, just blend in because everything is so top-notch and perfect. I mean, the kid kills every scene he's in from drama to comedy. We need a secret code. I can't know that stupid one. It's really hard to compete with Ryan's stage presence and comedy chops, but he really hangs in there. And the thing about the comedy that, while well, yes, it's often in your face and they almost pause for laughter. I got a time out, time out. Pet, bad, bad, bad blood, right in my open eye. There's also so much going on subtly. I love the subtle glances and awkward stares. I love that Deadpool helps Peter out of the chopper even though he has to break his X-Force stance. Every fourth wall breaking glance to the camera. One thing you can say for Deadpool's comedy is that he's a non-discriminatory offender. Almost to the point where you might think he doesn't want to make anyone feel left out. DC and Marvel. We have bow and arrow and basically Hawkeye. We are so dark! Do you say you're not from the DC universe? Winter Soldier arm. Black, Black Widow. Zip it! Thanos. Go get him, Tiger! Brown Panther. Terminator. Hands off that kid, John Connor! Harry Potter. Is there like a sorting hat? Stranger Things. Just fix it, Eleven. Not even the writers, of which he is one, are safe. That's just lazy writing. But just in general, they barely go a few seconds without a joke and it only rarely gets annoying. Most of the time, it's spot on. Stay back or Justin Bieber dies. Ha! 
Justin Bieber. He called you Justin Bieber. <laughs> but beyond the comedy, I think the most surprising thing, and man, I didn't expect this to compete with last week's emotional moments, but I had forgotten that Deadpool 2 was one of a very few films that made me tear up in public. The weird follow-up to the fourth wall breaking, goofy comic book movie that doesn't take itself even remotely seriously, that took itself seriously and succeeded. Somehow, I don't know how they pulled it off. Take on me unplugged didn't hurt, neither did Celine giving it her all. But I disagree that this moment doesn't work. It's subjective, clearly, but it gets me, that's for sure. I only know a little Deadpool from games and comics, so I could be off, but I wonder if his altruism in this feels a little outside of his character to diehard fans. He often does the right thing, sometimes he even wants to be a hero, but being so focused on Russell's salvation feels like another level. The reason I think it works is because you could ultimately claim it's selfish and that he wants to either make Vanessa proud or is trying to get back to her by following her advice. Some people would say there is no such thing as a selfless act because you can't complete one without the satisfaction of knowing you did so. But even for them, this is about as close as you can get. Worst case, it's just for Vanessa, but he also wants to save Russell from a future of torment, as well as stop Cable's family from being killed. All pretty nice things. Part of it plays into something that's a little out there, so stick with me for a second. So Deadpool takes a dig at Logan for riding his R-rating coattails and then says he'll die in the end too, which he did. But Deadpool also sort of told the same father-child story even if the outcome was different. I feel like it's due on the notes to not be intentionally meta. Even the song that Deadpool uses for his own death scene is Logan's death song called Don't Be What They Made You because Logan wanted Laura to be different from him, just like Deadpool uses the song to tell Russell to be better than Deadpool. It's almost the complete opposite ending of the first film, and yet it works because it's character growth. I don't know, something to think about. One of the more fun things to hear Ryan and the other writers, directors say is how their organic relationships, or Ryan's and others' natural improvisational abilities, lent to memorable lines like, You're doing great. You're doing great. He's doing great. And I can only assume Wade's love of Cable's gun was the same thing. That's got some zip. That gun is amazing. That gun is amazing. Can I have one of those guns? No. That's fine. Even the Hi Yukio gag seems to be something they continue to build on. Hi Yukio. Hi Yukio. Hi Yukio. Hi Yukio. Which brings me to something that's going to get me a little anger from both sides of the discussion. But I want to talk about it nonetheless. Let's talk about how not to do representation. That's when you do a press release that your movie includes a member of the LGBT plus community and then nothing in the movie even remotely pays that off. This is how you do representation. NTW and Yukio are a couple, and they purposely made Yukio the token gay girl, then only briefly mention their relationship in the beginning. And then she's just there, kind of like all different types of people often are, just existing. It doesn't feel forced. NTW wouldn't want to talk about her relationship, even if Yukio seems more open about it. You guys make a super cute couple. Yeah. We know that much about her from the first film. Some will probably disagree with me, but personally, I think the lack of the spotlight and subsequent press release was the best way to actually represent them. Which is funny because they are the first openly gay couple in a superhero movie, so they actually had something to brag about. But instead, they're just a normal couple. I'm sure there are still droves of people complaining that Deadpool isn't nearly pansexual enough, and you're entitled to that. Personally, I think to push it too far would diminish the emotional story surrounding him and Vanessa, which has been the core of both narratives now. Even this one was about getting her back and doing what she asked. They're messing with it more than last time, but even the most well-read Deadpool lovers would agree his pansexuality doesn't come up in every story. I mean, he was hopelessly in love with death for a while, but also Spider-Man. Point is, there's still time, and I'm sure some will say not enough about Yukio and NTW. But this was still a big step. They aren't main characters, NTW wasn't in the first one, but again, it's a step towards bigger roles. And as I feel like a hobbit once said, every journey begins with one step? Or did I just make that up? I'm just gonna take credit for that instead. Deadpool 2 was great, and I think this was a movie that was released in theaters perfectly. He's standing right behind you, isn't he? I found maybe one or two things that were better in the extended, but for the most part it just felt like they were stuck on two jokes or two performances in editing and just decided to send one to theatrical and one to the extended. Otherwise, most of what was cut should have been cut. Josh Brolin is going to be running the universe soon? I mean, you could argue that Thanos and Cable are similarly stoic, angry old dudes, but they're very different, and man does he kill this role. Nothing more needs to be said about Ryan Reynolds. At me if you ever need to talk to someone about Green Lantern. I'm here for you, buddy. And here's to hoping that Juggernaut franchise gets off the ground for you now that you've proven you can do that voice. Speaking of big CGI dudes, Colossus probably doesn't get enough love. He really tries his best to be moral and ethical and he even reads through his rulebook in his free time. Can you imagine trying to thumb through that tiny thing with those big, meaty, stiff pieces of rebar? Imagine how much easier it would be to just listen to the rulebook through an audiobook. Well, my friends, today's sponsor, Audible, has him covered. And everything that Colossus strives for, there's an audiobook for that. Whether he needs to learn about calisthenics, healthy eating, or just how to deal with bullying. So go to audible.com slash cinemawins, it does actually have to be lowercase, or text cinemawins to 500-500 to check out their unequaled selection 
collection of audiobooks. I'm currently listening to Dune, not because it's all that related to Deadpool, but because I haven't read it in a long time and it's so good. And I know you guys enjoy a well-told story. It's hard to carve out time to read, so doing it in the car when you're already doing nothing makes it all the more enjoyable. Once you sign up, you'll get a credit every month good for any audiobook in the Audible store, regardless of price, and unused credits roll over to the next month. If you didn't like the audiobook you chose, you can exchange it, no questions asked. So for your 30-day trial membership, go to audible.com slash cinemawins or text cinemawins to 500-500 to start today. No. You ex people. You're exhausting. I see what you did there. Puns. Bye, me. Bye, Yukio.